Well, welcome back. If you're a seller, you're going to love this and you're going to learn a lot. Sellers make a bundle if they'll just use a little patience. Now, most real estate investors want to buy and quickly resell. And I get that because they want that money to live on. But if you can put that money to work right away, you're going to do very well. So how does owner financing work for the seller? I'm going to tell you it works very, very well. Now, my name is Ted Thomas, and I've been involved for the past 30 years in a kind of unusual business of tax liens and tax deeds. And I'm going to tell you a lot about that a little later on in the video. But right now, if you become an owner and you're willing to finance properties, you're going to be able to make money on the interest and you're going to get wealthy a lot quicker than you would any other way. So I'll try to cover that so you get a good understanding of it. So 30 years ago, I discovered an alternative investment. That alternative investment was tax lien certificates and tax deeds. Now, we buy tax defaulted properties on a regular basis and we teach people to do that. And if they'll turn around and sell them, buy low, sell low, and then use seller financing, they'll not only make the profit on the sale, but they'll make the profit on the interest over a period of five or 10 years of financing. So today's episode answers the question, how does owner financing work for the seller? Well, if you're the seller, you're not only going to make a nice profit when you sell, but you'll make a profit on the interest on the total of your investment and the profit that you made. Now, I'll try to explain that and make it in simple terms. But the point is, you're not only going to get your investment making a lot of money, but you're going to get the profit on that investment making a lot of money. Banks are lending at 4% in the marketplace today, and you can easily lend with seller financing at 9, 10, 11%. So it's amazing how much money can be enjoyed just by learning some of these new things. So knowledge about financing is really avoided by an awful lot of people, but financing as a seller just makes one heck of a lot of sense. Now, why does it work? It works because the people that are buying they need instant gratification. For example, they want to buy a new car. They see what they want on television. They go buy a new car. They can get financing. Okay, why not use that same process where the seller uh, wants to sell and the buyer wants to buy? They basically want instant gratification. So you can give them that by financing the property. Now, most people that finance a, a property are either a new investor or their investor that's had some credit challenges. And maybe they have a poor FICO score. And I'll talk a little bit about that as we go. But the total payments are what really matter a lot. What you want to do is you want to be able to use seller financing when you sell. So I'm going to go through that process with you in just a moment. I'll be right back. So as I said, today's episode is about answering your question. How does owner financing work for the seller? And once you understand this, you'll see how much more money you can make on a real estate deal. It's perfectly legal to sell your own property. It's perfectly legal to be a broker. It's perfectly legal to sell with a small down payment and accept installments like Visa or one of the credit cards like Master Charge or even the banks. America buys on payments, so you can use payments to collect the money on this property that you have. It doesn't mean that you should do everything yourself and that you shouldn't uh, accept all the money if someone will come in and pay all the money. But it does give you another alternative. One, to be able to sell yourself. Two, to be able to use seller financing. So many owners use seller financing. Why do they do it? It accelerates the process. You see, if a person goes to a bank, they apply for a loan. If they're good, they'll get the loan, but it might take a month or six weeks. Okay. The bank is then going to require a home inspection, the bank is going to require an appraisal. That might take another two to four weeks. You might be 90 days down the road. Well, if you've got a, a buyer in your driveway, why not go ahead and get them sold right now with seller financing? That's going to make a lot of sense, okay? So my point is, all the documents that you want, all the document documents, anything that you need, you can get from a title company or an attorney. You just need to learn this selling process. So 30 years ago, I learned this an alternative investment. Now, what was the alternative investment? Well, it was basically the county was confiscating property and they were reselling it. They weren't reselling it for retail. They were just trying to get the back delinquent taxes. 
Well, that looked like a good deal to me because those properties were selling for 60, 70, 80 percent discounts. Well, if I can buy a property for 80 percent discount, I can tell you, I know I can sell it for more than the 30, 20 or 30 percent that I paid for it. If that's the case, I've made money what I buy. The key to the business is make money when you buy. Don't wait until you sell. So if you know that you got a property for 30 cents on the dollar, you can sell it for 50 or 60 cents and make a nice bundle of change. So the point is, that was an alternative business. I never looked behind me after that. I just kept doing that business. Why? Because it was so damn profitable. All right, now this comes about because many property owners don't pay their property tax. What do I mean by that? There's people that have an accident in their family. They have an accident, they have to pay the doctor's bills. Or maybe the car, they didn't pay the insurance and it's been wrecked. Whatever could, there's crises that happen in people's life. If they didn't have insurance and they didn't have, weren't able to take care of their child, they're going to pay the doctor bill and take care of the child. They're going to pay their insurance. They're going to do that. So the property taxes are neglected. Well, if you neglect property taxes in half of the states, those states are going to send a notice of default once you have defaults been issued, they can confiscate that property. That means they're going to confiscate it, take it away from you, and you're not going to have any equity or any property. But they don't want the property. So what are they going to do with it? Well, at least once a year, all 3,000 counties are authorized to have an auction. What kind of auction do they have? They have an auction to get rid of the property. They don't want a defaulted property. They want to get the property back on the tax rolls. So they sell it for very close to the back taxes. So let's say the back taxes are five or six thousand. They might add a few fees to that. They might start the bid at six or seven thousand. All right, now when they start that bid, other bidders can come and buy it. But all you have to know is what's the actual value of the property. So let's say it was a hundred thousand. Well, I bet you would pay ten thousand for that, or twenty, or even thirty. Of course you would, because you're making a heck of a deal. All these properties are sold at auction with no mortgage. The mortgage has been wiped out. It's been X'd out by the treasurer. What a great deal that is. All right, so why is the county doing all this? Well, the county doesn't want people not paying taxes, number one, because those property taxes pay for the police, pay for the fire department, pay for the schools, pay to fix the roads. You're getting the idea. So the county needs money. So the legislature has authorized the county to confiscate the property sell it at a public auction, use the revenue to pay the police, to pay the fire department, to pay the school teachers. What about the county employees? They all want to get paid. All right, so the legislature authorizes that. So the board of supervisors, county commissioners, authorize the treasurer and the tax collector to have that auction. Every county is authorized to have auction. In addition to that, there's 1,400 municipalities that do the same thing. So what I'm telling you, it's a big business. If the county has levied the tax, tried to collect the tax, and they can't collect it, I can tell you right now there's going to be an auction. They're going to confiscate the property, and they're going to sell it at auction. Anybody can buy. It's always sold to the highest bidder. All right, so the brilliance of this system is anybody can buy, and when they do, they're going to buy a property without a mortgage or a deed of trust loan. What's that all about? Well, those deed of trust loans and mortgages are wiped out by the county. Now, I didn't make that rule. The legislature makes that rule. These are all state rules, and each state is just a little bit different. But here's the important thing that you need to know. The properties are sold for 60, 70, 80 percent discounts from the retail price. That means you're getting a bargain. Now, if my student investors buy these for 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar, and then they resell them, well, what's a fast way to resell them? Well, you have to do a couple of things. You have to price it right. You have to have some kind of financing and you have to market the property. In other words, put the property out there in the media and announce what you have. So it's a simple process. Anybody can do it. So what are we answering in this particular episode? I'm answering the fact that seller financing is a good thing. Why is it a good thing? It'll accelerate your sale and you can make extra money. So you're going to see that in the following example, which I'm going to do in just a second. If you want to accelerate a sale, just put in your advertising, installment sale, seller financing, owner financing. Believe me, the people that want bargains are looking at that. So my students, 
They buy the properties at auction. They try to buy them low. They try to sell them low. Why do they sell them low? Simply so they can get action and make things happen quickly. Plus, most of these properties are slightly used and abused. Now, they're not junk. Don't buy junk. But they properties that aren't pristine. So they want to sell them quickly. To do that, they lower the price. So buy low, sell low. And now they offer seller owner financing. And when they do that, they attract a whole new market. There's a whole market of people out there that the banks won't touch because those people have poor FICO scores. All right, now how do you find those people? Well, you have to market your property. Where are you going to market? Well, you could start out with Craigslist. Then you could use to go to Facebook Marketplace. You could find a broker and use the MLS system. You could use every electronic site that's out there. You could use eBay. You're getting the idea. There's lots of places to do that. What about Zillow? What about Trulia? What about every electronic site you could ever find? All those ways you need to market, but you need to use some keywords in your ads. So what are you going to put in there? You're going to put in there that you have an auction bargain, and you're going to put in there a high assessed value and the value you're selling. You're going to use keywords like seller financing, installment sale. You're going to make the people know that it's available. That's going to cause traffic. The pr property will attract people if it's the right price, it has seller financing, and you're willing to market the property and let the world know about it. There's nothing unusual about this. This has been going on for decades. The people that know how to sell, they sell by using owner-seller financing. That's what they do. Meanwhile, all the other $100,000 homes are competing with each other. So if you have a $100,000 tax assessed value and you're willing to start your pricing at 65, that's going to be attractive. If they see seller financing or owner-seller financing, believe me, that's attractive. How are you going to attract those people? You have to market. You have to let people know. So a good example would be a $100,000 property and you purchase it for $30,000. Well, you didn't steal it. It would probably started out at five or six thousand, but you bought it for thirty thousand. Well, certainly you'd be willing to sell it for sixty-five. Now I know what you're saying, Ted. You're leaving all the money on the table. Wait a minute. Thirty thousand pays a lot of bills around my house. I'm sure it'll pay a lot of bills around your house. So think about what I'm saying. Let's buy it for thirty. Let's put it in the market for sixty-five. We're buying it low. We're selling it low. Who knows what you paid for it? Nobody. The only one that knows what you paid for that property is the other attendees at the auction. And they don't care. They're, they're moving on to the next deal. The point is, would-be buyers are attracted to prices, owner-seller financing, and they're attracted because you market in all the right places. Now, who are these would-be buyers? Many of them have poor FICA scores. They're bad money managers. What have they done? They haven't paid their bills on time. Or they haven't paid them at all. All right? So those people are attracted. You'll have a, a way to attract them by using, do, using your marketing. And now you just have to make sure you sell with a contract, not with a mortgage. Use a contract which simply says, don't pay for your payment, I'll evict you. That's all. You don't have to go through the foreclosure. All right, now banks have lots of rules. The banks are the primary source for money. So they have to have rules. Now their rules are FICA scores, six, seven hundred at least. So if the, our client doesn't have that, there's no chance of getting a loan from the bank. Many people, 20, 25 percent of the clients are rejected by the banks. Why don't we take care of those people and sell them with a contract? Where would you get a contract? Go to a title company. Everything they do will be on, honest and ethical. Go to an attorney. Same situation. They'll be able to get you contracts and you can sell your own contract or work with a broker and still do owner financing to help these sellers out. All right, nobody knows what the price you bought it was, but they do know what you're trying to sell it for. And if they know there's a $100,000 market and you're selling for 65, they're dreaming about making that profit for themselves. You're dreaming about making the profit between your purchase price and the price that you sold it. That's a profit. So you took your investment plus that profit and you finance that and you're going to come out with some pretty big numbers. All right. Will you want a down payment? Well, of course you would. Now, the buyer knows values. The buyer knows the prices in the neighborhood. But the buyer needs a deal, and the buyer, in many cases, needs owner-seller financing. So now let's sell the property for $65,000 and get a 10% or a $10,000 down payment. So that means you're going to finance with payments $55,000. 
Let's say we do that for 10 years. All right. And let's say we do it sixty six hundred fifty dollars a month. Well, one year, 12 times 650 is going to be about seventy eight hundred dollars. And now you do it for 10 years. That's going to be seventy eight thousand. Now you paid thirty thousand. You're going to get seventy eight thousand. And oh, yes, let's add back in the down payment. So you're going to get seventy eight. You're going to get eighty eight thousand on your thirty thousand dollar investment. Think about how much money you made all because you are using owner financing and helping the sellers. It works for everyone that wants to do it. It's legal, it's ethical, and you can do it. It's going to take you a little while to learn it. All right. So now we've answered the question, how does owner seller financing work? Well, it works damn well. You just need to learn how to do it. So sellers can make large profits, not just on the margin between purchase price and the market they sell it for and the price they sell it for, but also they can add all the financing to it. All right. So now you know how the sellers make profits. They make profits in multiple ways on the interest payments and on the markup on the property. My name is Ted Thomas and right below me, there's a free gift for you. You want to take advantage of that.